Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited you came across this message. The sermon you're about to watch is from our series, The Stressless Life. If you're joining us for the first time, let me be the first to say welcome to Hope Church. Go ahead and open up the Hope Church LV app or visit hopechurchlv.com and click connect with us to fill out a short digital connection card. Once again, thanks for joining us today. This weekend, as a church family, we are continuing a series that we started several weeks ago. And the subject of our current series is one that for many of us, we do not like to talk about. However, it is a subject that we need to talk about. And that subject is stress. We are in part three of a series that we have entitled, The Stressless Life. And we're looking at what God's word has to say regarding us experiencing the supernatural peace of God in the midst of a stress-filled world. And when we began this series several weeks ago, we asked a baseline question. And that was, what is stress. If we're going to spend several weeks talking about stress, it's important that we know what it is. And I want to go back to that definition as we jump in. We have defined stress this way. Fearful concern experienced when life's demands seem greater than my ability to meet them. Now, here's what I know. Every week, every day, for some of us, every hour and every moment, this is what we face. But I'm thankful today that we can stand on the foundation of the Word of God and know that God has designed another way for us to live. And it is a way that is marked by peace. If you have not been a part of our series thus far, I want to encourage you to go on our website, go on our app, and catch up. Because we've spent two weeks laying a foundation from the book of Philippians chapter 4 about what God has to say about stress and peace. But this weekend, we are going to make a shift in our series. For the remainder of this series, we're going to begin to look at areas of life, specific areas of life that cause stress. And today, we're going to look at an area that is at the top of every list regarding why you and I experience stress. And that is stress in our schedule. And I believe that God has a word for us today. I want to show you a couple of statements. And I would imagine these are statements that you have said or statements that people around you have said Recently, here's the first one. I am way too busy. Does anybody want to be honest in church today? I am way, somebody up in the top. Yes, yes, sir, I see you. Another statement that is very common for us. There are just enough, not enough hours in the day. I said that yesterday. Here's another statement. I am always in a hurry. It's so common in our culture to hear people talk about how hurried they are. Here's one just for fun. My wife has this on a t-shirt. Running late is my cardio. <laughs> Here's one more. I am constantly running out of time. Now, to whatever level you or the people around you can relate with these statements, here's what I want you to know. This may be your reality, but this is not the heart of God for your life. He has designed another way. I remember several years ago, I was really living in such a way that a lot of those statements were constantly in my heart, in my mind, and on my lips. And I came across a book by a man named Lance Witt called Replenish. And in that book, he makes some statements I want to share with you quickly. He says this, Many of us live with a stuck accelerator. 
I can relate to that. The frantic pace of life resides in the church as much as in the community. And we have no trouble rationalizing our velocity, filling up every second and compressing time characterizes our generation. Now, in my journey through this book, it was that final statement that really led me to a place of making a lot of excuses. And I thought to myself, well, I have this responsibility and this obligation, and this is on my plate. But as I continued reading, he makes one more statement that I just think is powerful and convicting. He said, hurry is more about what's going on inside you than what is going on around you. So as we lean in today on a discussion about stress in our schedule, before we look outward, we first have to look inward. We're going to do that from the Word of God. So if you have a Bible today, look with me in the Gospel of Luke, the third Gospel in the New Testament, chapter 10. And in just a moment, I want to begin reading in verse 38. Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 38. And here's what we're going to see in this story. We're going to compare and contrast two women that are in this passage of Scripture. One of them is named Martha, and the other is named Mary. And we're going to see from Mary and Martha two very different attitudes toward their interaction with Jesus. So Luke chapter 10 Let's start reading in verse 38. Now, as they, meaning Jesus and his disciples, went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Verse 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. I love the patience of Jesus. You are anxious, troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Two women in this story that reflect two very different attitudes toward time with Jesus. So the way that I want us to work through this passage is I actually want to lay before you three questions. These questions are really important. I want you to know that these are not easy questions to respond to. So I'm not expecting you to develop a full response during our time together. So I hope you'll write these questions down because these are questions that all of us need to continually go back to. These are not one and done type of questions. They're questions we need to wrestle with on a regular basis. And no one in this room is beyond these questions. Whether whether you've been following Jesus for 10 days or 10 years, all of us need to wrestle at the heart level with these three specific questions about our schedule. So here's the first question I want to lay before you as we try to compare and contrast Mary and Martha. Question one, does your schedule include time with Jesus, or is it ordered around time with Jesus? There's a difference. Is your schedule one that includes time with Jesus, or is it order, or is it built around time with Jesus? So as we look at Mary and Martha in this story I want you to look first at verse 38. Verse 38 says, Martha welcomed Jesus into her house. This word welcomed indicates 
receiving someone as a guest. So here's the picture. Martha is doing whatever she was doing that day, and Jesus knocks on the door. She opens the door, and she sees Jesus, and she says, Well, Jesus, since you're here, why don't you come on in? I'll spend a few moments with you, and then, Jesus, you can go on with your day, and I'll go on with my day. She included some time during her day to be with Jesus. You could say it this way. Martha was polite. She was respectful in her attitude towards time with the Lord. But for Mary, we see something very different. Look at verse 39. Verse 39 says, Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. This word here, sat, actually means to settle down. And the word listened means to hear with reflection or to lean in to what was being said. With Martha, we see someone who says, okay, come on in, let's sit down for a few minutes and then you go your way and I'll go my way. With Mary, here's what we see. Lord, you have my full attention. And I'm here with you as long as you want me to be here with you. Martha included time with Jesus in her day. Mary ordered her day around time with the Lord. Where we see Martha being polite, we see Mary being desperate. I really feel that is such a word for us, specifically with the church in America. As we think about our worship, as we think about our pursuit of knowing Jesus, Are we being polite and respectful or are we being desperate? Because I believe the call of God to the people of God is that we would not just give him our best on one day, but that we would be in a desperate pursuit of being in his presence every moment of every day. And there's a difference. You could say it this way about the characters in this story. The presence of Jesus was a part of Martha's plan. The presence of Jesus was Mary's plan. If Martha had time, she was going to spend a few moments with Jesus. But if Mary did not have time for anything else, she was going to be with Jesus. I want you to think for a moment about your schedule. Think about the way that you invest your time. Are you more like Martha? And you do your best to include Jesus if you can. Or are you more like Mary? And if you do nothing else, you are going to prioritize sitting at the Lord's feet, giving him your full attention, and prioritizing him first in your schedule. There's a, there's a statement by Henry Blackaby that we've shared hundreds of times here at Hope Church. I love this statement. Henry Blackaby said this, A love relationship with God is more important than any other single factor in your life. Now, we're in a church environment. So I would assume that for the majority of us, we would hear this statement and say, Amen. Great quote. I'm going to put that on Facebook. What a great statement. Today, though, I want to ask you, not do you just believe this in your head and in your heart, but do you believe this in your schedule? Because as you look at the way that you build your plan Sunday through Saturday, would you say that it reflects a life that prioritizes above everything else a love relationship with God? And once again, we're not evaluating today what you say. We're evaluating the way that you order your day. I believe that as a Jesus follower, you will never eliminate hurry from your daily schedule until time with Jesus is the building block of your day. So identify 
Right now, as you navigate through life and you navigate through your schedule, are you more like Martha or are you more like Mary? Because time alone with Jesus is not just a good thing. It's not just a perk that's available to get us through the week. We believe that it is to be an anchor in our day where we allow God to order our day around him and his eternal purpose. So in perspective and in practice, are you more like Martha or are you more like Mary? That's the first question today. What a challenging question. Here's number two. Is your schedule dictated by that which is urgent or designed to accomplish what is important? Is your schedule dictated by that which is urgent or designed to accomplish what is important? Back to our story in Luke 10. One of the words that I would use to describe Martha here is the word frantic. It just seems like by the question that she asks Jesus, she's frantic. And frantic people do foolish things. And she was trying to host. She was probably trying to clean. She was probably trying to cook. None of the things on her list were bad things. They just weren't the most important thing. And in the midst of her chaos, she says something to Jesus that just causes me to shake my head. Verse 40. Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? And then she gives Jesus a commandment. Tell her then to help me. Now, as I read that, the commentary in my mind is saying, really, Martha? You want to ask the Messiah sent from heaven to earth, God in the flesh, who is in the midst of living a perfect life to be crucified on the cross for the sins of humanity and will be brought back to life on the third day to offer salvation to everyone. You're asking Jesus, the Messiah, if he cares, and then you're telling him what to do? But what happens? You know this. When we are so consumed with things that appear to be urgent, we're frantic, and we lose perspective on the big picture. Does that describe your schedule? You're so consumed with the things around you that you're putting out this fire and dealing with this issue, and you're driven by that which is urgent rather than driven by that which is really important. The contrast here is Mary. Mary's posture in this story is very different. Verse 42 says, Mary has chosen the good portion. So for Martha, we see someone who did not have a list of priorities. Whatever was in front of her is what got her attention and her responsibility. But we see here with Mary, she chose something different. This word chosen in verse 42 is a powerful word. It's not a flippant term. It means to survey all of the options that are out there, and then you select the best. Let me illustrate that. So I have four little daughters. Um, My youngest is Noel. And if I ever need a win as a dad, and if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You just need a win. Here's my go-to. Pink box donuts. (laughs) Amen. 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 I don't do this often, but if I need a win, I'll take my kids and specifically with Noel, we'll walk through the door at Pink Box and all of a sudden she's saying, donuts, donuts, and I'm trying to quieten her down because it's embarrassing, but here's our drill. We'll walk up to that glass case with all the different donuts there and we'll walk line by line and she'll look at every donut and about five or 10 minutes later... (laughs) She finally decides the one she wants, and she'll say, Daddy, I want that one. In essence, she's saying, I've looked at all the options in front of me, and I want that donut because I believe it's the best. Now, get your mind out of pink box donuts 
and let's put your mind back in the Bible. Mary here is saying, I looked at everything that was an option for me. And I've chose that which is important, which is sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I think for us here, there's a lesson about priorities and time. A priority is a thing that is regarded as most important. Something that is more important than all the other things. As you think about your life, have you identified your priorities? Have you identified the things that you're going to say yes to and the things that you're going to say no to? For many, many people, they would answer honestly and say, you know what? I've never really clarified what my priorities are. And here's why that's an important thing to wrestle with today. Look at this principle. Every yes is a no to something when it comes to time. So we need to determine, are we saying yes to the right things and are we saying no to the wrong things? Or are we living in such a way like Martha where we're just allowing whatever's in front of us to determine what is getting our time, energy, and resource? I want you to hear me say this today. God cares about how you spend your time. We would all say that God cares about how we spend our money. But I also want you to know God cares about how you spend your time. And by the power of his spirit, he wants to clarify for you and for me how we are to invest our time and the priorities that will get our attention. Let me show it to you in the Bible. John chapter 5. Here's what Jesus said. Truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. And look how this passage ends. For the Father loves the Son and shows him. It's a phrase that means to point out all that he himself is doing. Here's what I want you to take away from this. God wants to show us as his children what is truly important. The problem is we're not asking him to clarify those things. God wants to reveal to us the priorities for our life. In 2013, God brought a man into my life named Dan who has since become a very significant mentor for me. And at that point in my life, I would describe kind of my pace a little bit like Martha. I was frantic I was going from fire to fire, trying to make things sure that things were good. And I sat down with Dan one day and I said, Dan, how do you spend your time? Like you come across as a guy whose schedule is defined by peace and not stress. I would love to hear from you. How do you, how do you get there? And he said, you know, humbly, I'm not right 100% of the time. But let me tell you one thing that I do that I think really helps my schedule. He said, every morning, I have two significant moments with the Lord. To which I said, are you saying you have like two quiet times? Like you're a super Christian? <laughs> what do you mean? He said, no, no, no. He said, one of those times with the Lord is for my heart. Probably just like you, I need to get my heart right. So I'll spend time in the word, in prayer, setting my heart on the Lord. But the second significant moment I have every day is with the Lord about my schedule. And I lay before him everything on my schedule for that day, for that week, and what my priorities are. And I say to him, Lord, are these the things you want me to invest my time in? I had never heard that before. I knew that it was important that I spent time with God in the morning to set my heart on him. I had never reached a place of actually surrendering my schedule and my priorities to him on a daily basis. He said, and in those moments, I'm not thinking through, well, what's today going to bring? What my heart is wrestling with in that moment is, Lord, what do you desire to bring into my day? And there's a difference. I want to challenge you today to think about what are your priorities? So that's the second question. That's also challenging. 
Is your schedule driven by that which is urgent or that which is truly important? There's a third and final question that I just want to lay before us today. Does your schedule express a heart captivated by things that are eternal, of eternal significance or distracted by things that are temporary? So you think about the way you spend your time. Does your schedule express a heart captivated for things that are of eternal significance or would you say you are distracted by things that are temporary? One last comparison from our story today. Verse 40 and 41 tell us three words to describe Martha. Distracted, anxious, and troubled. It's the picture of someone being pulled in multiple directions. Because they don't really have clear priorities, they're pulled in multiple directions, and she is left distracted, anxious, and troubled. But when you look at the life of Mary, you see the exact opposite. Verse 42 says, this is Jesus describing Mary. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. So once again, we see contrast in response to the presence of Jesus. Let me summarize a couple things here. What we see in Martha and the way that she's described is we see a person distracted by the temporary. But in Mary, we see a description from Jesus that says she was captivated by the eternal. Here's what scares me. I'm fearful that for many of us, our lives are being defined by the temporary. It's what our culture's pushing it's what's celebrated. It's what pressure pushes us toward. It's the messaging that's hitting us every day. We are lured into defining our lives by that which is temporary. But Jesus said, the reason I love Mary's response to how she spends her time is because what has captivated her is the eternal. And this is better. Pastor Rick Warren said, you were not put on earth to be remembered. You were put on earth to prepare for eternity. May we be a church, may we be a people that in terms of the way we steward our time, we are captivated by that which is going to last forever. And we find the wisdom and the grace by the power of God's spirit to push past the things that want to distract us and pull us in different ways and find what Jesus said is the best way to live. So I hope today those questions challenge you like they challenge me. And I hope that you will consistently go back to those questions in the days ahead as you evaluate and you look at your schedule. But here's how I want us to conclude our time today. It's very possible to hear those questions and feel maybe some conviction, to feel some inspiration, to have some clarity, but not really know, okay, what do I do next? So I want to end our time with some stuff that's very practical. I want to share with you four essentials to remove stress from your schedule. And as I look back over my life, when these four essentials have been in place. My peace has been high and my stress has been low. I wanna share these with you as we prepare to conclude our time together. So four essentials to remove stress from your schedule. Here's the first essential, a daily God time. And here's, here's the call to action for us. Set aside time to be alone in fellowship with God. Every relationship in your life is deepened through an investment of time. And the same thing is true when it comes to your relationship with God. If we're going to deepen our relationship with God, we must invest time alone with him. 
the primary building block for our day is to be God time. That's what we call our daily time alone with the Lord. It can be in the morning. It can be in the evening. It can be both. But we must protect the rhythm that we have every day to set aside time to be alone in fellowship with God. Probably just like you, I struggle over the course of the whole day to remain in constant fellowship with the Lord. It's just a challenge. Things begin to consume my mind. Something happens that affects me emotionally, and I just, I just lose sight of it on a regular basis. But I want to share with you something that really impacts the way I'm able to walk in fellowship with God every day. And I just wrote it this way. The daily decision that most impacts my fellowship with God throughout the day is this. Setting aside time to be alone with him in the morning. You see, every day when we wake up, when our eyes open, our hearts are drifting away from the truth. And the only thing that brings us back in line, in step with the truth of God, is sitting at his feet, giving him our full attention, allowing him to speak to us and us talking to him through prayer. And there's power in this. And it's not something that we just say, yeah, I'll get five minutes here. No, it must be a priority that is protected for us to be alone with the Lord. And the enemy knows how significant it is. Look at this statement by Jim Elliott. The devil has made it his business to monopolize on three elements. Noise, hurry, crowds. Satan is quite aware of the power of silence. Anything he can do to try to distract you, to get your attention off of that which is best, he will do. But if you want to remove stress from your schedule, essential number one, the foundation of it all, is a daily time alone with God. Here's the second one. A set of priorities. A set of priorities. And here's the call to action. Determine what is most important and build a plan around it. And this is not a process that should be done right now. This is you over the course of days and weeks seeking the Lord about what he says is most important for you. Based on your season of life, if you're single, married, with kids, without kids, retired, you need to establish what is most important for you. And this is a great process to seek counsel to invite some other people into your life to help shape exactly what these things are. And here's what's probably going to happen because this is what happened for me. When I really carve out a God-initiated process to clarify my priorities, here's what I realized. There was a lot of stuff on my schedule that God did not put there. So if you find yourself today as we're talking about God time and you think about the priority of our service each weekend or being in a small group or engaging in mission, if today you would say, I'm just too busy for all that. Listen, you have more on your schedule than God has designed you to carry on your schedule because those things are to be a priority. But you need to establish what are my priorities. Your priorities are either set by design or default, and you get to choose how you approach it. Here's a third essential that I believe removes stress from your schedule, a plan that includes margin. Here's the call to action. Refrain from planning out every moment of your day. Refrain. It's hard, I know. My sister's with me. <laughs> Refrain from planning out every moment of your day. Look at this verse from Isaiah 26. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I read that verse and I'm deeply convicted because I know how often I'm not walking in perfect peace with my mind stayed on the Lord. And then I look at the Gospels and I see Jesus. And I see that he was never in a hurry. He was never anxious. He was never freaking out. And one of the reasons I believe that that was the case is because his day was not super programmed where every moment of his day was planned out. 
And I just realized, thinking about Isaiah 26, thinking about the model of Jesus, I try to cram way more into my schedule than I should. And so here's a principle that I begin to live by, and I want to share it with you, and you can apply it in your life. It is unwise to max out your schedule. Living with margin allows more time and attention to be given to the activity of God around you. Here's what I know about me. 99.9% of the time, when I max out my schedule, I miss the activity of God around me. I'm too focused. I'm too consumed with what I'm supposed to be doing. And there are people, there are opportunities, there are open doors that I just flat miss because I'm so focused on how busy I am and how uh, crammed my schedule is. Here's, and, and let me just say this about this statement. I don't share this with you about margin to give you an excuse to be lazy. I share it with you because I believe it's wise. And it's a better way to live. And it leads to a life of peace versus a life that is full of stress. Now, back to the fourth one. Fourth and finally, fourth essential is a person or group for accountability. Here's the call to action. Invite others in your life to help you eliminate distractions. We all have a tendency to veer away from whatever plan we put in place. That's why I love that God has made us a family. So we can invite other members of this family to help keep us on track and hold us accountable. But I want to say this to you. Accountability only works if you realize that you need it. And if you're willing to listen and follow godly counsel, and if you're willing for someone to tell you what you need to hear, even when it's not what you want to hear. And accountability is best when you invite people into your life. You give them access to your life. I want to summarize these four essentials. Daily God time. It's got to be in your schedule. A set of priorities, a plan that includes margin, and a person or group for accountability. If you're here today and you're hearing what I'm saying, you're like, yeah, pastor, I want that. But where do I start? You start here. You start by saying, how do I begin to build my day around time with God? How do I get clarity about what's most important in my life? How do I do it in a way where there's some breathing room, there's some margin to be sensitive to the activity of God around me? And who can I invite into my life to help shape my plan and hold me accountable? I believe those essentials will allow us to take a step toward a schedule that is more defined by the peace of God than the stress of this world. This is our third service of the weekend. We've got probably over a thousand people in this room. We've got hundreds more that are watching online. I was thinking this morning, all of us are stewarding a different amount of financial resources. None of us are the same when it comes to the amount of money that's been entrusted to us. All of us are also stewarding different gifts, different talents and abilities that God has given us. But all of us, as long as the Lord leaves us on this earth, are stewarding the same amount of time in the day. We have 24 hours. So the challenge today is not to find more time. That's not what I'm, I'm trying to communicate. What I am trying to challenge you to do is to wrestle with, am I spending my time in the best way possible? Am I spending my time in a way that is honoring to Jesus according to his design? Because when we do, I believe what will mark our schedule will not be busyness, will not be hurry. It will be the indescribable peace of our God.